And we're back with our coverage at ONS 2017. We're here with Arpit Joshapura of the Linux Foundation and Chris Rice of, the, of at and Labs in Arpit. And Chris, welcome to the program. How are Thank you? you. Good to have you. Uh, glad you're here. Uh, I want to talk about um, a very uh, timely press release that went out just this morning by the Linux Foundation um, regarding the Open Network Automation Platform, also referred to as ONAP. Chris, I'll start with you if you don't mind. Can you give us sort of the, the primary function, function of ONAP? Sure, I mean, ONAP is a platform. It is really a network operating system for SDN automation. And so if you think about Android or iOS and how they became de facto uh, operating systems for the smartphone, our goal with ONAP is to make that the default network operating system for SDN automation. And it handles a wide variety of tasks that we believe are necessary to do the whole life cycle associated with SDN and NFV for a service provider. Our pit is another primary function of ONAP to really um, allow operators and vendor vendors to coalesce and um, avoid fragmentation in the SDN realm. Absolutely. Uh, one of the goals of launching this project called ONAP, where we brought, as under the Linux Foundation, a governance to bring you know, large operators like AT&T, China Mobile, Orange, um, uh, you know, Bell Canada, uh, Reliance, et cetera, and some of the tier one and tier two vendors in this community together under a common governance model that allows innovation in the community. And so once we uh, op open source this, and, and you know, we have announced that today, it's available to the community to build on, to contribute, and to take it to the next level. I noticed the code uh, that you released, again, within the press release this morning, uh, was available almost immediately after the formation of ONAP. Was that the intention from the beginning? Uh, so the formation of ONAP uh, was announced earlier at Mobile World Congress, and we had the ability for the Platinum members to go and access the code. Uh, what they were doing as a team was to make sure that the tests are done, the branding is complete, and that's why we are really excited to launch it to the bigger community, in fact, the global community, today here at ONS. Of course, Chris, the, the technical governance of ONAP uh, lies in the developer community. Just for people that are not very familiar with uh, an or organization like ONAP, can you tell us why that is? Well, yeah, I mean, look, there's an executive board that really helps with the strategic direction, and this was really all done you know, in cooperation and in alignment with what the Linux Foundation normally does. And then there's a technical steering committee, and the purpose of that technical steering committee is to you know, appoint different groups, working groups, uh, to work in different areas that are aligned with the strategy. As ARPIT says, to you know, kind of round out the code as it exists, to bring it forward, and to take it into new areas where, quite frankly, it isn't today. So the structure of ONAP, uh, ARPIT, uh, for an open source project, is that typically how it's rolled out, or is it a little bit unique? The governance is very standard, in fact, Linux Foundation has been doing this for you know, a couple of decades now. And the governance under the, what I call the open source networking umbrella is, is common for almost all of our open source projects, whether it's ODL, OPNFE, and a whole variety of those. Um, what is very unique is uh, the components that make up ONAP that lead to an automated network stretch across the subsystem and across the stack. So there's a quite a bit of um, you know, complexity to bring it all together. And when you have two of the largest open source projects coming together, so one was open source eComp, which you know, AT&T contributed to the Linux Foundation, and the other one is OpenO, which was already hosted in Linux Foundation, to bring the two communities together and launch ONAP, uh, you need a very tight governance, mm. and you need a very, uh, you know, you need a governance that everybody understands, and that's what Linux Foundation provides. From a carrier perspective, Chris, uh, and again, I always ask this sort of uh, futurist question, a year from now, how do you think uh, ONAP, or what would be your uh, response as to how ONAP has facilitated network virtualization, NFE, SDM? Well, I think, you know, for it to do that, it has to have scale. And you know, today the num the members that you know Arpit had re reviewed and just went through a little while ago, they account for about 38 percent 
of the worldwide mobile sub, so about 1.8 billion. Uh, I think for this to be successful a year from now, we'll probably be closer to 3 billion. And that'll be a little bit over 60% of the worldwide mobile subs. And I think then we'll have the scale uh, that'll really make a difference. And quite frankly, you know, we can make this, again, the kind of global network operating system for SDN automation. And that'll, that facilitates a lot of things. It facilitates the whole ecosystem, how vendors connect to it, how service providers use it, and the interoperability, which is sometimes lost on the fact that, you know, when everyone, you know, makes a phone call from, you know, Barcelona at Mobile World Congress back to the States or somewhere else, all of that has to work seamlessly. And as we move into this area of SDN, that area of SDN uh, internetworking or automation is going to be important. And a common platform will help make that happen faster. So Arpit, uh, just to kind of uh, wrap up here, uh, you said the ONAP code base is production ready. Um, how can app developers access that? First thing they need to do is just go to ONAP.org and they will see the wikis, they will see all the information, uh, all the modules, and yes, the base code is production ready. Uh, in fact, AT&T has been deploying it for the past over two years. Uh, what we are bringing in as uh, the process to develop for the app developers is a CI-CD process, continuous integration, continuous delivery. So a couple of weeks, weeks sprints and very agile development. And as we go through it, uh, the first expectation is we will be releasing the, the merged architecture and the code this year. And uh, while the official dates are yet to be published, uh, there is already tremendous amount of work that has been done in the past couple of weeks at the conference and by the whole global community uh, to pave the way to get there. So we're really excited. We welcome all developers to go to onapp.org and start contributing right now. Well, it sounds like it's great to have AT&T uh, on board um, and we're glad we were around uh, for the Linux Foundation press release so we can talk about it. So Arpit and uh, Chris, thanks for your time. Appreciate Thank you it. very much. Thanks Thank for you having very us. Much. And uh, for all of our coverage here at ONS 2017, you can reach us at tinow.org. So long.